While the hype for Activision's online juggernaut has been unavoidable, the Wii version of Call of Duty Black Ops was kept tightly under wraps before launch. Now that it's been declassified, should you hold Black Ops to the same high standards as you did its predecessor on Nintendo's hardware? Or should this chapter be blotted out from the history books? Kilo 1, the road is hot. Exit through the rear of the building. Black Ops' 60s-era plot follows an unconventional path. The story starts out with Special Forces soldier Alex Mason enduring a brutal interrogation by shadowy figures. Subjected to capture and brainwashing, Mason holds the key to deciphering a code implanted in his mind, and flashbacks take players through Mason's past. Things can be disorienting at first, but the story begins to gain momentum as the pieces come together. I know you! Morkuta! Oh, what we did to you. While the Wii version retains the same overall story arc, some parts have been cut down, destroying the tension and pacing of scenes like Mason's visit to the Pentagon. And there's no denying that the visuals simply don't deliver the same impact during the most shocking and dramatic moments. Allow me to introduce the campaign in Black Ops lasts a brisk six hours as you fight through missions in Cuba, Russia, and Vietnam. The game might set a record for the number of escape sequences, and the adrenaline stays high throughout. You frequently hop on vehicles, gunning down pursuers from a motorcycle or helicopter, but some missions have been completely neutered on the Wii. Where players on other consoles will experience a frantic riverboat shootout, Wii players have a leisurely cruise without incident. We're all yours, sir! Where do you want us? Black Ops is the most robust online multiplayer of any Wii game to date. Activision has bypassed many of the restrictive limitations of the platform, giving you the ability to see profiles of people you recently played with, create friends lists, and even use the voice chat while playing. There's still no smooth host migration, though, so matches can end abruptly if the host leaves. Like previous installments, you'll level up to unlock guns, equipment, kill streaks, and perks, but in Black Ops, you'll also earn currency to purchase items. The result is that some gear can be acquired more quickly, but the cost can discourage experimentation. In addition to the scores of challenges, contracts let you place bets to accomplish specific tasks within a set time, and perks have pro versions that can be earned by fulfilling goals. If you're a hotshot with second chance, for instance, you can upgrade it so allies can revive you during team play. Player counts are limited to 10, but there are 14 maps with all the traditional modes like Domination, Headquarters, and Capture the Flag. Wager matches let you bet in-game currency in separate game types, like Gun Game and Sticks and Stones, mixing up standard death matches with fun variations. Oh, no. Meanwhile, World at War Zombies return, letting you team up to survive an undead onslaught, using your score to purchase new weapons and unlock new sections of the map. The one problem with having so many options, however, is that the Wii's smaller player base makes it tough to get matches going in some of the less popular modes. While the package is impressive, not everything carries over. Kill cams, camera spikes, and the theater are all missing, so you won't be able to bask in the glory of your exploits. Extra modes like Ground War and Dead Ops are absent, several kill streaks like the Chopper Gunner have been omitted, and the game is only one zombie level. Given that there are plans for DLC, we'd be disappointed if any of the modes left out show up with an additional price tag. Even if you've played other Wii shooters, it can take some time to adjust in Black Ops. Aiming down the sights isn't as sticky as in Goldeneye, requiring more precision, and you'll likely need to experiment with the settings a bit to find a sweet spot. He's down. The battlefield is meant to be a chaotic place, but Black Ops suffers from unclear direction throughout the campaign. At one point, it's too easy to overlook the detonators you're supposed to pick up as another marker urges you to follow someone. Objectives sometimes lack visual cues, and verbal callouts can be easy to miss if you're distracted with immediate danger. Adding to this confusion, there are also times when enemies can't be harmed until you walk through some invisible trigger, causing you to waste a clip on a guy who can't be hurt. There's not as much feedback when you're dangerously low on health, so death can come unexpectedly, and there's no death animation, just a jarring black or white screen. The campaign still has its strong moments. There's a fun level that has you leaping from rooftop to rooftop, and another that lets you blast through soldiers with an incendiary shotgun. 
Lima Niner, I got eyes on X-Ray. It's just a shame that there isn't a consistent level of polish throughout. Multiplayer is where players will spend most of their time, though, and that aspect of the game is more finely tuned. The gameplay is just as addictive and rewarding on Wii as it is on other platforms, and there are some great map layouts. It's incredibly satisfying to seek out a player driving an RC car, or to demolish someone's score with a tomahawk throw in Sticks and Stones. In more limited situations, it's impressive how closely Treyarch replicated Black Ops for the Wii. Side by side, many scenes follow the same exact structure, offering a comparable experience. However, there's not as much attention to detail as you'd see on games tailored to the Wii. Instead of being rendered in the Wii engine, many cutscenes are just horribly compressed recordings from other versions. The game lacks lighting and texture effects, and open areas can look bland and muddy. At times, it's implied that a fierce firefight is raging at a certain locale, but upon inspection, there's simply nobody there. The execution is often sloppy as well. You'll come across enemies that are frozen or get stuck in geometry, random graphical flaws like a pile of sandbags and properly connected to a trench wall, or a character's hands resting halfway through a desk in a major cutscene occur much too frequently. The campaign definitely looks rushed, but as with the rest of the game, the presentation still holds up quite well online. Call of Duty Black Ops for the Wii is a two-headed beast. The single-player game has its high points, but it's an inconsistent facsimile of its HD counterparts. Meanwhile, the multiplayer is a huge step forward for the platform, despite the absence of a few features. Call of Duty Black Ops delivers the Wii's best online experience yet. Whether this version is your only option, or if you just simply have an itch to test your skills with the Wii Remote, you're in luck. Fire! Fire!